welcome back to this to my channel. I've been over there on SB. If you follow me and you're new to my channel, I welcome you over on the SB. I'm all about creating to help the new ones and share my life stories and experiences with a speech syndrome, and ICD, and the like, so that you can get the lowdown from how I manage and go my everyday life. Also, along the way, I do some tips and advice with your general health versus your personal health, or even just also words of encouragement here and there, as well as anything else that may tickle your fancy. So if you're into any of these type of videos that I share, regardless of what they may be, or you've been following me on my social media site, smash that like button, or also just don't forget, if you haven't done so and you wish to be part of my YouTube family and journey, subscribe to my channel, as well as keeping up to date with what I get up to by turning on the notification bell. So it's been brought to my attention and so many times before that I'm trying to complete as many as I can of all this autism and series versus all these other series that I have clearly promised. So some of them are coming to light now, but some of them will be taking longer than others because as I said, some of this will be based on like the overseas kind of research that I'm doing, especially the health part of the asbestos syndrome of the healthcare facilities or what have you as well as transport and whatnot some will, may come into play for you know new zealand research as well so as i said this is due to the lack of or not much you know research has been found or done for us in new zealand because as I said this is still a new everyday subject matter obviously for for some of the researchers that are out there that are trying to do hardest to, you know, gain gain enough information, understanding, and research for us to actually get onto play. So this one has been coming to my attention because of what I've been reading, which is is prejudices and or autism in personal space and boundaries. As you know that basically every autistic will be different in their strengths and weaknesses, as I said, and they're not all the same. But we've got to believe that, you know, understand that although many children that does come into the world, regardless who they are, they may believe that they're the seed of the universe, everything has to be given to them on a silver platter. And basically also that with the belief of theirs or some form of common ritual that may have come into place somewhere along the way as they grow out of it, they will hopefully begin to understand that other people have feelings and different beliefs from themselves that will differ. According to the autismhelp.org fact sheet, this is, if, you were, if you're a parent of an autistic child, however, if this doesn't mean also for autistic and what I'm going to share right now, just to put their mind also, this can be for other children with different needs as well, be it, you know, here say ADHD, ADHD and the like this might come into play and help you guys hopefully too so bear with me on this front but in the meantime I'm focusing on the autistic ones here because that's where I roll but if you want to know more obviously this will hopefully be of help to you too let me know in the comments below how you go about with these bits and pieces of the personal space and boundaries for your kids and hopefully we can leave this as an open discussion right now so to speak so that we can learn from each other because you know everybody's teaching methods and whatnot will be different year to year so as i said if you are a parent of an assisted child however you may notice that your child has a difficult time understanding that other people differently than they do or may someone else could interpret it differently for the information that is given to them. Because of all of this, they may have a clearer understanding or clearer set of rules in hand and boundaries that will help the autistic child to learn appropriate behaviour, even if they are having a difficult time understanding why some behaviours are appropriate and then some are not. So, according to Bright Talks for the Structure and Educational Resource for Child Development, Autistic Children rely heavily on structure or routine to fully function. And some do, some don't. Just bear with me on this. The reasoning being that the world is a confusing place for a child with autism because they don't understand the world the same way that you may do. Your child may struggle to understand the basic sensory data and why one piece of information is more important than the other. Having structure in their life 
it helps them to learn what behavior is appropriate in any given situation and environment wherever they may be because the routine really changes and they become used to what they understand as normal. Structure will help them to know what's acceptable and right through these repetitious routines if you do them day in day out. Another one to look out for is stress. Autistic children with routines are less stressed than those without them according to the Autism Help but all. But when your child has a strict routine, however, they are likely to go into a panic mode or become afraid and then a sensory overload will come to play as well as a meltdown. Because many autistic children have a difficult time understanding differences and transitions in their lives, however, it's important that you as a parent help them to, by minimising any stress possible but establishing specific rules and boundaries in their routine. For example, you may create a chart with a timetable on it that allows your child to see precisely what each portion of the day may look like. For example, you can help minimise stress by making it a rule that they have to wash their hands in between outside playtime and lunch each day. To ensure that they follow this rule and know that this is a requirement to wash their hands, you can place a photo of soap and water on the timetable between lunch and playtime, which helps them to stick to their routine, while still obeying the rules that you have set for them. Because obviously, as I said, visual aids and cues can be useful for, the, for certain people with autism. So, next one is preventing tantrums and meltdowns. While all children are different and have their own set of reactions to change or being upset or what have you, your autistic child may be one of the many who will occasionally throw a tantrum or have a meltdown. For example, if you go on vacation somewhere, it may may scare and confuse them to wake up in a different place with a different routine for a few days. According to the Autism Again Help .org fact sheet, you need to prepare your autistic child for any changes as well in advance, as often as possible also to help minimise any negative reactions and responses that they may have to change in the rules and boundaries that you've set in place. It's imperative also that when you have upset their routine or schedule that you talk to them in advance, wanting them that the rules and boundaries that you have at home are still in effect wherever you go on vacation or wherever you are in that environment. If you want to change a few set of rules such as bedtime or the amount of time the child will get to play outside, you must warn them again in advance that rules will be different to help them to adjust. Boundaries. Boundaries are important for your child because autistic children sometimes have a difficult time understanding even the most basic rules. You can help your child to understand Excuse me. Where are we? I understand boundaries by using visual cues, as I mentioned just before. By using visual cues such as colours that represent things that are okay and that are dangerous. A classic example, you can teach your child that red means no and place a red tape or red paper on the doors in your home that they're not permitted to use without the help, such as exit doors or oven doors. This will help your child to understand what's okay and what isn't without being so confused. While a child without autism may have no trouble connecting rules, they already know two new rules. Many autistic children will struggle to do the same thing, which makes visualisation easier to help clarify boundaries even more important. So, there is no doubt I, for me, I long to protect my integrity, to take care of myself, to limit my exposure to harm's way. A problem is that, much like the hidden unspoken rules of the social interaction, boundary setting remains in an elusive abstraction, somewhat of an invisible tooth that has been extracted or implanted in my mouth with no concreteness, no representation, no realness that I'm nonetheless supposed to utilise. There are several reasons that I may struggle with the understanding, recognising, establishing and implementing boundaries. There's just one of my limitations or one of my weaknesses and I'm still working on it with some part, but I believe that I'm getting better. One, there is a genuine moment that to understand and incorporate boundaries as individuals, we ought to honestly look at ourselves and understand what it is we want. The problem with this line of reasoning is I don't know what I want sometimes. I mean, I know the basis of what I want, but like everything else in life, if I took a long time or too often to make that choice of what I want, I get trapped in the mark and go of what is the concept of want and what is the difference between the wants and needs. And how do I do to my what's more important and least important? 
and what's ultimately self-centered and selfish and what isn't of anything and what I am expecting too much from the others in life and what if I am set of loss and don't want for warmth. Two, another tip for understanding and implementing boundaries is to take inventory of feelings, recognize feelings, acknowledge feelings and base boundaries on my emotional responses. This is definitely one of those tips not formulated with the autistic individual at heart, however. To begin with, feelings are extremely confusing. I could write a novel on feelings with each chapter be, being a new, ever-changing and transforming emotion. It would be like a Transformer movie or some other Marvel movie that you see. Literally, emotions aren't logical. I have them, that's for certain, a plentiful amount, but dang, they don't jump out and surprise me time and time again. As it is, I don't know what to expect from them of these emotions, nor what to do with them sometimes or most of the time. Particularly the toddlers, the shards of anger, disappointment, letdowns and the like that cause so much confusion in my jungle inside my mind and body. <clears throat> sometimes it takes days for me to process through self-expression, hibernating and deliberating in my brain before I can identify what emotion has happened sometimes. Trying to base the boundaries on my emotions, it's like trying to base them on little green men who just being down of these little aliens because that's how my feelings appear to me. Little aliens hiding behind the couch and shouting out surprise at random intervals. Three, another suggestion excavating boundaries is to recognize what causes stress. Bah. Okay, so let's just say when you're an autistic, what causes anxiety is equivalent to the luggage hoisted to buy a large piece of airplane. And let's leave it at that. Moving on. Number four, next on the what to do list of boundary making, check in with yourself, get in touch with yourself. Okay, if you're autistic, maybe you're laughing at me. For the most part, as a general overall species, what I've found in my correspondence of with many other autistics and SBs alike, is that typically we're not ourselves pretty darn well with the challenges and the dilemmas that we have. This isn't to trying to find out who I am, but who someone else is. I assume my brain more so than any professional I have come across. Maybe I'm too smart for my own good. Here's that. What it comes down to also is just as I do a check on with myself more than most of the time. I just can't seem to find a boarding pass to other people, however. Five. How about listing what you won't tolerate and what is unacceptable and unacceptable? What about designing the boundary at every time and running it out? Hmm. This is a tough one because being who I be or who I am, I have a natural high tolerance level to life in general. Why? Because every day I have to tolerate about 100 things in the span of, let's say, in a day. Or the first hour of waking up. Because my mind is constantly buzzing around with so much stuff of what to do, what to say, how to act, and everything else in between. I am on sensory and thought overload. I just am. I am, I am, I am, I am, etc, etc. Et Thusly making the leap about what I shouldn't tolerate to what I can tolerate and what's extremely beyond the limits of what I should tolerate becomes very confusing in some parts of my jungle. And truth of the matter is, silly as that may sound, I tolerate sometimes bad grief, the hairy mold, the sticky residue on the kitchen floor. But then again, depending on my mood, not always the case. The list goes on. That's a lot I can tolerate, a lot. I'm not sure what I can tolerate because, cannot tolerate because I spend so much time tolerating. Of course, if any of you know me, there are some things I don't tolerate, but no need to be nitty gritty and criticise. But there are some specifics or the extremes here. I am good at this extremes, at least in recognising them. For the most part, I understand such as being physically bleeding. That won't do in my life, but that's something I can see. It's concrete. I can visualise it. I can feel it. It's a definite marker pinned and done. The rest of the, of the subtle stuff, however, the toilet seat, uh, or the most severe stuff, I guess, so it's just not following through with you word for word. That sort of stuff, the things I can't visualize or concretely almost touch, I don't get. I don't want to know, I do know when enough is enough, unless it usually literally slaps me in the face and comes to bite me in the ass. And I don't know the difference between complaining and setting boundaries. All is the honor of fairness, it's all about being able to look after my own self. Number six. Another idea in assisting and setting boundaries is to organize and establish your core values. I've got a few, love, serve, give, and I'd like to add that to the plan on work on letting go of fear and understand not most people are doing the best they can. Those are more my core values and many more that I have got. 
I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing with these fine things and more of these values beyond practicing them. I don't understand how they could be pricks for my image or rules or boundaries, though hell of it at heart. I don't believe most people suck or are mean or are terrible, at least not on purpose, I hope. I tend to think painting serious mental capacities to be a good person that most people try their best with what they have been dealt with in cards of life. From this line of my core values, I find it hard to put to then pull out what I should say to set out the boundaries. I suppose I already say, I love your fit, but please can you do this to assist me? But I sometimes wonder if being nice is the curse when it comes to down to boundaries. Would it be more effective to say, get off your hot ass and help me? I don't know. Because obviously, at the end of the day, as you guys know me, I'm usually the one that wants to have my independence and don't ask for help. Number seven, it's advisable to recognize when someone has stepped over your boundaries. This is a double lover that circles back to not constantly understanding my own emotions sometimes, not knowing what is substantially causing more stress than anything else, or even to that matter, when, what to say, when to say it, and how to say it sometimes can really bug people. In other words, it's difficult to identify what I can't tolerate over the masses of all the little troublesome annoyances tots running around about. I can't readily recognize when someone has overstepped the manner. I don't think this is because I am maybe too accepting, too forgiving, too loving, or too of too much anything. The fact remains that there is something about the way my mind functions that makes it challenging to spot someone overstepping my limits can be my little blind spot. So my tips and advice from from this friendly aspect is all children need strong rules regulation, expectations and boundaries, whatever it may be. All activity interactions do have boundaries, do define the limits of our actions that are acceptable and non-acceptable. They provide a mental map to keep us within these expectations. Most of those boundaries are usually unwritten social rules, which are then invisible and then becomes assumed. These boundaries provide the structure to guide our behaviours and provide predictability to a very little world of what we know. These boundaries help provide the foundation of our sense of safety and security. Without these boundaries, we would be lost in translation, anxious and insecure, and many other emotions all in one that will then lead to our meltdowns and everything else in between. For children, however, on the autism spectrum, they do have a hard time reading these unwritten, often invisible boundaries. Unless the boundaries are very clear and concrete, they don't have the mental map to structure what they are doing. Without these concrete boundaries, their behavior can be hit haphazard and disorganized. With ugly expectations, the children often overstep the boundaries and behave in many ways that are unacceptable to, to our standards. These children are often perceived are as resistant and oppositional, with purposeful intent to be non-compliant. In many cases, though, however, they do simply not understand expectations and limitations that are and often have a strong need to control all activity interaction to create predictability to their own worlds. Children on the spectrum need very concrete black and white rules and expectations, boundaries, not meaning here, with very consequences for following them. Once the rules and expectations have become clear, consistent, and predictable, they provide children a pathway to follow, which decreases the anxiety and many other mixed emotions. If the boundaries may need to be strong, concrete, and literal, if possible, provide them, as I said, visual pictures or some visual that are written and maybe pictures with it, or just some physical boundaries. Keep them short and simple, though, however, in black and white to begin with. To be understood, the expectations have to be very clear and consistent with little flexibility. The child needs immediate cons consistent consequences that are firm in the face of resistance. If the child's will becomes more consistent, flexibility can be gradually introduced. We often go the wrong way by assuming that the child understands what is expected from from them, the parents. Since these boundaries are intuitive to us, we forget that they're not for just children, but adults alike too. To so assist the child in meeting expectations, it's important for us to provide a concrete path to follow. Make it a standard practice employment the following. 
One, before events, to find the boundaries, rules and expectations, to provide the framework for understanding, preview for the child of what they can expect to happen, what expected of them, to find the rules and regulations and any consequences to follow for not following them. Explaining what seems obvious to us, lay out a structural path for the child to follow. Two, if it is a new activity that they're doing and it's new to them, don't assume that the child will be able to successfully follow the path. Use guided participation with close framing and guidance to stay on the correct path. Don't expect perfection. Provide the guidance. It is easier to set the stage for success than correct them when going astray. Three, when the child begins to see off course, gently block and redirect back on path. Don't let them get too far back off track. Limit. This maximizes the likelihood of any success along the way. The further off they get, the harder it is to get them back on track. It's easier to find the boundaries to easily redirect them to stay on path than it is to let them go, get off track and then reel them back in. Four, be a firm but loving guide. Save them to the boundaries and implement clear and consistent consequences for lowering the guidance boundaries. Consequences need to be implemented immediately and consistently. They have to be very concrete and black and white again. Six, if possible, avoid creating new rules or change rules during the game of life. Once the expectations are set, stay consistent with them. Making up rules as you go along can cause strong resistance. Seven, children respond best to what is routine and then what is habit. Start with boundaries early on in life and make it a habit to follow the rules. Rules provide the possible guiding behavior. Overall, on considering boundaries, I this way of reasoning and justifying and finding cause for almost anything, in other words, or action. I don't know how to turn that reasoning machine off long enough to step back and refer to the non-existent rule book that we usually call of the book of life, within the boundaries as well as a reference guide and inferring what I should say or do to enforce a limit that I am not sure if I set. But in the end, for this SB, it comes down to learning how to ask what I need with honesty and good intentions, though. And moving in this world with integrity through the acts of not only being offended, but safeguarding my mind, heart, spirit, and physical body, and doing the best what I can do for me, even if it does upset others along the way. It's up to me to be happy and whatnot. Well, this quickly ends all of them and boundaries with personal space. Give me a like, thumbs up, comment below. Feel free to share the these around to family and friends. So feel free to also comment below in the way of how you guys go about, you know, defining boundaries and whatnot and how you go about them and maybe open this floorboard for discussion. And also the guys, basically, if you haven't done so already and you want to be part of my YouTube family and my journey, don't forget to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so you can keep up to date to what I'm doing. So and also the guys, thanks for watching, do what you love, love what you do, until next time, SB signing out, and I'll see you soon, ciao for